Okay, so with the Groff Zeppelin, uh, I think you start rocket planes. Yeah. So with the Groff Zeppelin, I don't actually start rocket planes. I will start the bombs. Why? The rocket planes are hideously, obnoxiously, what the hellingly slow. So like the Groff Zeppelin is super fast. Torps are fast, the bombs are fast, and the rockets are really slow. It's nice in the sense that you can trip over a DD, slam on the brakes, and still be able to hit it. But with this uh, broadside reticle, sometimes it's hard to get a good hit. And even then, the reticle can... The rockets can kind of go everywhere, which can be pretty chaotic. But the reason I start the bombs is because you can zip at, like, holy crap, super fast speed across the map to be able to spot, spot, and spot. You can drop a fighter on the way. If you encounter an AA trap, if, for instance, you get surprised by the Baltimore or you get surprised by an Akazuki and whatever, you can double click because the bombs don't have a prep time. They just, you can automatically drop them. And as soon as you do, meh, the bombs are dropping and your planes are continuing to fly. And while they do that, they're not taking AA. So it's a great, great thing to do, uh, to do scouting with because you can very quickly get across the map and you can just, if you need to, to zip across, get spotting without getting shot down. But you're going out with the rocket planes, which means if you trip across the DD, you'll be able to shoot it. Cool, so you drop a fighter for spotting, which is nice. That I'm not a big fan of. So you dropped a fighter and then you came back. If you're playing a CV, you're on a time limit. You know, you need to be doing stuff for two reasons. One, if you're not doing stuff and the enemy CV is doing stuff, then theoretically, you know, it's a competition and you're letting somebody run faster than you're running. So they're going to, you know, that's, it's not going to help you win. <laughs> um, so you have to keep in mind that you're thinking, I'm trying to do this on pace. I'm trying to do this on pace. I'm trying to go, you know, get influence, do, etc. So you came all the way out here, you dropped a fighter. Cool, the fighter's gonna watch this shit over here. And then you turn out and you cut out this way. If you wanted to look for a DD, you needed to go a little deeper and then come out and drop the fighter. But don't linger, because lingering means another 10 seconds before you see this, another 10 seconds or 15 seconds before you see this. You know, commit to the bit, as it were. So it got the Baltimore spotted, which is cool. Me and the destroyer, I'm glad you spotted the Balti. But um, if you'd maybe come up here and done this, could have dropped the fighter here, the fighter would have actually lit the Balti as it came forward and shot at it with its AA. Um, and instead of being here, you'd be about here right now. So this I don't understand. Um, okay, so you spotted a little bit, you spotted the Marco Polo, but we only have, at this particular point in time, we're a minute and 45 seconds into the game, and we've got four four enemies that have been seen, four enemies lit. The enemy CV has come over, I think on roughly this track, might not have seen the Oigan, probably saw the Tirpitz, might have seen the Buffalo, might have seen the North Carolina, is about to see the Udaloi. So potentially there's five spots there, uh, depending on your Groff Zeppelin detection he might have even seen you so he might have about four five or six ships seen and if he keeps on this course he's going to see these really soon if he doesn't see them already so this gives roughly eight uh placements for the enemy team to figure out uh maybe i don't want to mess with that i'll mess with this guy i'll position on this side of the rock instead of that side of the rock it allows people to make better decisions um going in on the baltimore baltimore does not heal so any damage you do to the Baltimore is going to stick, but from this angle, you're not going to get any damage. Um, you're just going to lose some planes. Maybe you'll see a destroyer. You know, there could be a destroyer hiding under the skirt of the cruiser. Um, but if it comes down to, you know, the potential to do 5,000 damage or the potential to spot another three, four, five, seven ships, uh, I think spotting is going to outweigh that. The only time I make an exception to that is if there's three destroyers or four destroyers, because three or four destroyers becomes chaos. Two destroyers could roll together, three destroyers could roll together. They trip across one of your DDs, what? Oh, oh shit, and then the DD's dead. And then suddenly you have one less DD. And it's hard to recover when your front line starts to break. It's really hard to reestablish a front line. Um, so long story short, scouting run, definitely important. Taking a shot at the Balti, I don't know. You might get the God shot. But no, 
Because the rockets are pretty inaccurate, so... Alright, coming out with Torps. You did, however, see the Yugamo, so you did actually... You were able to uh, see the DD under the skirt, which is good. Uh, more of the enemy team has started to light themselves, so they're coming forward. As people are wont to do. You know, people take action. Spotted the Yugamo. You could drop a fighter here. Okay, staying on him. So one thing that you have to remember is if you shoot this, you're going to come out of this directly on top of a Baltimore, getting shot by a Baltimore's close in full blower, full blast AA. Um, and this is a pretty tough angle to torp. So there's a fighter here, so you don't have a way in on the Kansas. Rather than going for the Yugamo, you might actually just like drop and maybe peel over, use your heal to eat the damage from the Baltimore and come over and strike the Marco Polo. But one thing that is good about this is the more that this person has to deal with, fuck, this guy's shooting, fuck, this guy's shooting, fuck, these torps are coming, the more overloaded the person is, which makes them an easier target in general and less dangerous to your team. So here we've got... Here we've got the Baltimore that's going to be shooting at you, so you need to be using the heal as you come in on the Marco Polo. Still haven't healed. Still haven't healed. So, you threw away two planes there because you had a you did have a heal for this. You didn't need to lose two of those planes. Is that a big deal? No and yes. Every plane loss matters, and the better you play every time you play, the better you will be the next time you play. Um, so in this case, you were in short range of an AA cruiser. You you wanted to use the heal there. Oh, that might actually hit. Two? Did you get two? Because he beached? Aw, oh, sad times. Um, okay. So now we have to look at, we're, we're four minutes into the game, what needs to be done on the map? If we look over to the Alpha Cap, you got four people, they've got kind of five, they got two here, an Ager, a Cheshire, an Aki. Could you do anything against the Aki? There's a fair amount of DPS you're going to be fighting with, but you might be able to bully him with rocket planes. Over at mid, well we don't have mid, that kind of sucks. Did we already lose a DD? We did. Uh, Sashu got murdered, I guess, over here. That sucks. Um, I suppose I could have rotated over and tried to take it, but I mean, it's kind of a lot over here, <laughs> uh, which is probably why I was, yeah, I'm doing this, you know, I'm blocking the Groff Zeppelin, I I'm okay, you know, I'm, we're doing the thing, uh, but working the Akazuki might be a thing, I actually would have expected, personally, that you took rocket planes for the Yugamo, um, because the Yugamo hasn't smoked, so you could bully him into using his smoke, or if it's Torp Reload, uh, I think the Yugamo is, uh, I think the Yugamo is the tier 9 Shimakaze line, so it's either Torp or Torp Reload, or Smoke or Torp Reload Booster, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, you could have ripped into the Yugamo with uh, with some rocket planes, because you knew exactly where he was. You'd probably get hurt by the Balti, but, because you know where the DD is, it's kind of a priority target. You could have made something happen there. As far as the bombs go, uh, I'm, I'm thinking you might be going for the Balti. Um, you could go for the Marco Polo or the Kansas, and I mean, Citadel damage sticks to battleships, but at the moment, you need to look for stuff that people can work on and you can get rid of. Cool, so you're going on the Balti. Okay, the reticle on this is a little late. Alright, um, I'm going to explain something real quick. Which is... Uh, my mind just snapped in half. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so if you've got a ship and you're coming up from behind, we'll make this actually, we'll make this a lot smaller. So you've got a ship that you're trying to attack and you're coming up from behind. If this, uh, whatever, if this is the AA range of the, the ship, or, you know, ease of whatever. I mean, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it all. We'll do it right. We'll just get it done. Come on, whatever. Orange, please. Thank you. And we'll give them a short range, too. Which isn't big enough. There we go. It's better now. 
So if you've got your planes uh, heading up or whatever, here's your planes. That's the wrong, wrong sizing. Big one in the middle, small one on the bottom. There we go. All right, transparent it is. Cool. So if you're, if you're coming in after this ship, but the ship is moving away from you, instead of coming in, if it's sitting still, you go through the outer, you get to the middle, you tell you take the shot. If it's coming at you, you go through the outer, you take your shot. It's very quick. If he's running away from you, he's going to be pulling away. So you're actually going to be lingering, uh, playing catch up, getting shot, getting shot, getting shot, drop. So when you attack from the rear, it needs to be, uh, you have to, well, you should know it's going to be, uh, you might end up taking, say, two seconds to get from, uh, to come in from the front if they're going in that direction. It might end up taking three seconds if they were not moving. It might take four seconds if they're running away, which means you have two entire seconds in their medium range. You know, full blast, get fucked, super damage, AA, whatever. So if they're running away, that actually hardens them in terms of how much damage you take to get to the target. Typically with the German bombers, you're actually going to be wanting to come in from the sides. Um, not that it really matters with the bombers, they're still terrible in terms of hitting anything, but that way you have the quickest approach. So you're gonna cut through and say maybe three seconds, you do the thing. Um, secondly, when you are in a bombing run, if you see your target, you actually wanna have your little reticle here. You don't wanna put it on the target, you wanna put the, tar uh, put the reticle here and let it firm, because this is where it's gonna firm, and then let it drag up to the target because then it's not a fight then it's not like you start here oh shit i gotta i gotta slow down i i don't know if you give yourself some wiggle room you give yourself some time then it'll drag on and you can take the shot also which is kind of nifty with the groff zeppelin bombers you you come down but then you actually ride low to the water and you come in level and then you can chuck that way so you can actually chuck in through the sidewall of a ship too if you want to extend out the animation because it can go for a while Okay, so you got Torps going, you see a Yugumo, I hope you fight her. You didn't fight her. So the reason you fight her there is because Yugumo has shitty AA. And if you fight her directly on top of this guy, the Yugumo's lit. It, it has two options, it gets the fuck away, well it has a few options. It A, gets the fuck away from the fighter, but that's gonna take a while. It B, smokes, and then stays in the smoke because it's scared of the fighter. Or C, it kills the fighter and it's a Yugumo, it ain't gonna do that quick. So if you drop this, this buffalo has all the time in the world to move, reorient, and clock this dude. If you leave, the Yugumo goes dark, the buffalo has to pop a consumable, maybe his consumable isn't ready. Um, it gives him a limited window of engagement versus you drop a fighter, that gives him like 10 to 15 seconds, then he radars, hydros, whatever, and continues ripping the Yugumo apart. When you spotted this, this is a low, a low AADD, you needed to fighter it. Good drop. Okay. Two hits. I mean, Balti was maneuvering. So, it's part of what's gonna happen. Okay. That fighter was incorrect. Now is when you fight her. Um, for two reasons. One, because the Yugobo's not dead. Although, to be honest, I wasn't thinking about that, because these rockets, who knows if they hit. But two, because now, if you look at your icon on the minimap, you're directly over the Yugumo, which means when you call the fighter, it's directly over the Yugumo. Now, because you dropped it early, which is okay if you're trying to spot, like, a surface ship that, that has a larger aerial detection, um, if the Yugumo sails north, he can get out of range of the fighter fairly quickly. Although, granted, with 400 health, you probably just spin around and kill this. Um... There we go. So it didn't matter anyway. But, um, technically you would have wanted to drop it directly on the enemy plane, or the enemy, uh, destroyer. Okay, so you can see that your Ostergotland is in distress. There's a fighter, there's some planes, there's a bunch of red guys over here that might be shooting him. Um, and he's wounded! Oh! He's down low, he's almost dead. So, you could come over here and drop a fighter if you wanted to. Um, realistically, the Oster's bullying back the enemy Groff, so it ended up okay for us. I was okay. But, um, 
still, what would you, what do you attack now? The Akazuki was just spotted, so you could take rockets, but you only have three. Three rockets ain't gonna do shit. Akazuki will shoot down one, you take a pop shot, probably miss, great. If you're gonna go, you wanna roll in four, so you need the rockets to be there. All right, bombs suck. So if there's not really anything to bomb, maybe you bomb the Monarch. You could try to follow the Balti, but the Balti's receded to cover, so you're not really gonna get anything out of there. So you got Torps, which is a good general purpose instrument. There's a Kansas that spotted. Maybe you can give him some help, and I think you end up going on the CV here. Fighter was a little too close because it's going to get shot down by the Kansas. I see why you diverted because you saw the Groff, but to see how quickly it was moving, there wasn't a way that you're going to get those torps in. Balti. I like the choice. Bombs for the Balti. If they hit, could do something. Okay, turning on the Groff Zeppelin. Um. You might get citadels here, maybe. German citadels are often very protected um, and kind of hidden. Now, in terms of like German battleships, uh, the turtleback or something guides the bombs into the citadel, seems to give you AP damage or citadel damage more easily. I don't know about on the Graf Zeppelin, but I guess we're about to find out. Secondly, Graf Zeppelin has a fighter. When you attack this, you're gonna use these two planes to attack it. And then you got five people over here that are along for the ride. You might lose one, maybe two, as you're coming into AA. But these other three, they've got kids. Think of the children. So if you went ahead and like pre-dropped, maybe pre-dropped a second time and just roared in with the three planes, you could probably roar in and get the drop. Still be able to use your two planes, and the fighter doesn't kill everybody else and make children very sad. So you lose one plane, lose a second plane. Yeah, maybe even a third. You did get a Citadel. Fuck yeah, bro. Lost a lot of planes for it, but I mean, they were uh, damaged because of flak. So, I mean, if you're going to take damaged planes in, they're going to get hurt. But you got the Citadel, which is pretty kicking. You just launched a new fighter. You only have the three planes. You use your heal, which is good. Good line. Uh, the reticle looks like it's so far past, but uh, realistically, the in-game reticle probably was better. Uh, the replay does not show reticles very well. You have an island position, so he's lighting you, but it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to take shots, and he just throws something at the turpits and goes back to port. Okay, so... Flak... The way that Flak works... We can swap Reno that over. The way that flak works is going to be, um, in this case, you had whatever you had the. I guess it's a Kansas. It's chunky. Um, so you had the Kansas, you know, coming in, and you saw your line to the Kansas, and you stayed on your line to the Kansas. So there was a little bit of movement. But it was still all in the same line, which means that the AA gunners are going to put flak walls, flak walls, flak walls, flak walls. So you're going to get hurt. Now, uh, there was a time when flak, you know, you're coming in with your planes and it would be like flak wall here and you could slow down the flak fizzles because it's already popped and you speed back up through it. And then there's another flak wall, and you could maybe speed through that because it was placed here and said, and it was too fast or whatever. And you could kind of speed juggle through flak walls. Either it's because they changed boost so that uh, you don't get to like just have in, you know boost that you can just pace across the stream uh, screen when you're going from point A to point B on the map. So often you get somewhere and it's like shit, where's my boost? Um, but this has not been such a viable uh, count, uh, a viable defense for me for a while now. The most consistent is going to be, so here you got a thing, you're going to come in and then immediately you turn. So the, the AI is going to be putting flak here. Okay, you're going, the AI is going to shoot flak here. You cut in. Flak here. Flak here. 
And once you get to this 3.5 line, this is where the AI gunner stops shooting. But what happens if you turn in here at 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, they could actually extrapolate and flak wall here, which means you just get to eat shit on your way to go do something. But it's gonna be uh, pulling, pulling the flak gunners, you know, in with turns to try to place to be able to get through. All right, Twerp's out. Uh, battleships on top of battleships, Baltimore on top of stuff. Resources running kind of low. Spotting the Neustra might be nice. Uh, staying on the Kansas isn't bad. Uh, Kansas has significant amounts of AA, but it is isolated. It's not in this like clusterfuck over here. So Kansas is definitely a viable target. If you want to strike into this, you can, but you need to strike on whatever's on the absolute outside. You don't get to go into the Marco Polo in the middle. You get to like take a pot shot at the Kansas before all your planes are murdered or swing all the way around to try to hit the Monarch or something. Uh, Kansas is still looking like the sexiest target and I do see a fighter, but because you only have the four planes, you might lose one or two planes coming in and then you shoot and the fighter doesn't care about sh uh, planes that have shot. So they just leave. So the fighter is not actually gonna be an issue. But you did drop a fighter, which is great, because the fighter's going to give some spotting. Take the shot at the Kansas. Hit in the flood. Best target for the bombs is going to be the Baltimore, if you can find it. Or maybe the Monarch. Monarch would be good, because the British Citadel is pretty big. You do have four planes, you probably get in on this. So you came in, hard turn left, flak put out, turn right back in, fast enough that it wasn't generating more flak, and you go. Hey man, it's bombs. Rockets were the only thing you had an appreciable number of. You might be able to take a shot in on that, or you could shoot the Kansas. I think you go for the Kansas. Okay. Hmm. This is a tough line. I think you committed to the point where it's like, ah, shit, maybe I could have done this a little differently, but fuck it, man, I'm in it now. It might work out. Worked out. Four, four hits, not, not a joke. Just a shimmy spotted Torps. Uh, to be fair, this Balti actually looks kind of locked in position. You could have come over here, either torped the Kansas or swung over and torped the Balti. Okay. Might get lucky. Might reverse into him. Okay, so here is where... We're not in a bad position. They have a whole bunch of people lined up. New Shishimi should have been in A like three minutes ago. They, they should have been getting points off this for a long time, forcing us to take a cap and stuff. They didn't. So that was, that was not okay, but whatever. Um... You're gonna get you're getting to a point where you have so few planes to go in on a Baltimore You lose two planes you drop with one. I mean they suck already So if you're dropping with half your payload, it might just definitely be a miss as opposed to missing twice. So um, It's times like these where if you hit the alt key alt is gonna show you uh, Time until the next plane and you need to think of how many resources do I have to bring to the party? You know like if you want to go to the club how much cash do you have to bribe the doorman with or whatever? You know, do you need to slip him with 20? Okay, well, you got to come prepared. If you only come with a 10, then maybe uh, it takes exception to that. And you get clocked or something. Maybe he says, come back in three hours. Then he forgets that you showed up. So you need to make sure you're coming prepared. And three planes is to the point where you're definitely losing one. You might lose two. You might even lose all three before you get a strike, in which case nothing happens. But definitely the Baltimore. Okay. Well, the Baltimore is dead, but looking at the choices, um, Kansas had 40 to 50,000 health. Who can shoot the Kansas? Maybe the Amagi can shoot the Kansas. North Cal, maybe. Buffalo, no. Me, no. Udaloid, no. Getting a hit in the Kansas, okay. You hit him. It's not going to do anything. Um, so ideally if you're gonna be throwing resources, especially when you've got like nothing, you're just completely on fumes You definitely 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 want to be looking at a focus target and 
Baltimore, I think, was definitely a focus target if you wanted to catch this, because you could come in on the outside. Monarchs AA is blocked by the rock. Kansas is too far away to assist. You could even pop over the island and take advantage of, like, blocking some of his AA to come in and strike. Um, Kansas, not a productive target. Okay, so at this point, I think you were just trying to spot. Because it's like, yeah, I'm just kind of throwing stuff. And I mean, we had the points to win, so. All right.